Welcome back. Some of Scotland's top artists have backed a charity campaign to help build a school for the creative arts in Uganda. The works of Peter Howson and Frank McFadden will be among those up for grabs at the Art for Africa auction. The online auction aims to raise money for the charity Star Child, set up by Michaela Foster Marsh in memory of her brother Frankie. The Find a Star in Every Child campaign will see a performance art space built into the plans for the school. And Michaela Foster Marsh joins us now. Thank you very much for joining us on oh, STV Glasgow, thank you. Michaela. Thanks for having me. First of all, tell us about the auction. How's it going? It's going exceptionally well. Um, from what I'm told, normally people don't start bidding till almost the end. Um, and already, you know, we're doing quite well. There's been a lot of bids and a lot of action on, on McTeer's website. You have some big names involved there, you know, for instance, Peter Howson. How yeah. do you go about getting someone like that involved in an auction? Well, well, Ronnie Bridges, my partner, knew some people in, in the artistic world and in, in the arts. And um, we knew Pete. I'd met him at a couple of receptions and um, we'd started off getting a few artists involved. And then we ran into Pete and I basically said to him, would you consider this? And um, yeah, he, he listened to it all and thought it sounded great. but. He was up to his neck with commissions and everything and we really didn't know whether he would it would come off and then we got a call saying that he had an original piece called the kingdom of heaven and did we want to come and see it so i was quite overwhelmed and um, anxious to see it and, and just was blown away couldn't believe it and frank he was one of the first artists to come forward and say absolutely no hesitation at all and i have to say that all of the artists have been exceptional so how many pieces are there up for auction? There's about 85 pieces. So a lot of work's gone into this. Oh, a lot, a lot of work. Now, it's been inspired by your brother, Frankie. Tell us briefly about him, Michaela. Well, we were adopted, he was adopted in the late 60s into the family. Um, he was 13 months old and we were just basically raised like twins and knew nothing else and pushed around Bowers Road in a, a twin pram. Um, but. You know, sadly, Frankie died in a fire and um, it took a long time for me obviously to go over that and, and be able to go out to Uganda. Once I did, I was just so overwhelmed by the, the poverty and particularly the amount of orphans that there are and I thought any one of them could have been Frankie. Okay, well our reporter Amy Iron, she caught up with you on the launch night of your auction uh -huh. and we're going to hear more from her now and more about Michaela and Frankie's story. <laughs> This looks like me. Yes. That was your, your half-brother. It was my brother. It was after this emotional trip to Uganda that Michaela Foster Marsh decided to set up her own charity. In memory of her adopted brother who was of Ugandan descent, Michaela became determined to help children in the poverty-stricken country. Well, he, he basically became my twin. He was adopted into our family when he was 13 months old. So we were pushed in a twin pram and, you know, we, we called each other twins. We would say to people we were twins. Um, very close. And sadly, when he was 27, he died in a house fire in Glasgow and Allison Street. Um, I wasn't ready to start a charity at that point. I think somewhere in the back of my mind, I thought I would love to do something, but there's so much grief it takes a long time a lot of people have asked why I didn't do it earlier it took a long time to get to Uganda there was lots and lots of delays and then when I actually got there this dream to go there just it was just the most incredible experience of my entire life building a school once seemed like a pipe dream but after years of work it's now becoming a reality if somebody said to me that I would end up coming back and setting up this charity and it would have gone from strength to strength and all these people would have peered out of nowhere to help, I wouldn't have believed it. But it's it's happened by its own, it's got its own life now and um, I'm just going with it. The Art for Africa auction is the latest step to raise money for the school. Run by McTears, over the next two weeks people can bid online with every penny going to the charity. You can find a lot of the bidding will happen just in the last hour or so. Um, you'll always get tentative bids that come in at the start, but um, I would have said it's pretty healthy. I mean, we're sitting probably just over £5,000 worth of bids for the whole auction just now. I would expect that to more than double. Peter Housen is just one of the 83 artists who've donated their work. I mean, this school is going to be uh, built and for children. It's really a creative type place. I, 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 um, I think it's like children that have trauma 
you know, through war or through any kind of personal suffering. Art is always a great therapy for them. I think he would be taken aback by the fact that 20 years on, so many people still remember him. Um, I don't think he would have known the impact that, that his smile and, and just him, what he had um, in life. I don't think he would believe that. Amy Irons, STV News. So what do you think Frankie would make of it if he knew that he'd inspired all of this? I think he'd be overwhelmed. I think he would also probably say, what on earth are you doing? <laughs> Going out to Uganda and, and dealing with rats and mosquitoes and getting dysentery. I think that's probably what he would say. <laughs> Very practical. <laughs> Very practical, yes. But what a fantastic thing to come from his legacy. It is. It's just amazing. It is. It's incredible. And the artistic community have just taken this and it's just going from strength to strength with them. I think they just recognise that need out there and, and um, you know, if you're not academic, um, I certainly wasn't at school and it's missing in the schools in Uganda, you know, the, the arts. It's so important. I was going to touch on that and Peter Howson touched on it uh -huh, in the package. Uh -huh. um, you were saying to me before we started recording that the um, in Uganda, it's very much about if you want to be a lawyer or a doctor or something along those lines. There isn't any outlet for creative people. There isn't. You know, we would ask the children what they wanted to be and they all want to be something academic and not every child can be. And I really felt for the children that were not, you know, perhaps I sort of recognised myself a bit in them. And, you know, if it hadn't been for arts programmes in my own school, I would have probably found myself quite lost. And, and um, you know, I really thought, well, if we're going to build a school, it's going to have an artistic hub in it for sure, where the children can have that outlet and learn all these different, um, you know, drama, art, poetry, literature, writing, paint, all of them, all the disciplines. And school children from Glasgow are helping, aren't they? They're getting involved. Yeah. What, what's their part? Well, Shawlands Academy, we did a big extravaganza there last year and the children got really involved in it. We, again, we didn't want to do a big Hilton idea, so um, we had a chef that's on my board and he cooked with the children. They made all the food for us and it was honestly, it was like, just like a, a banquet. It was, it was amazing. But it was the kids themselves that were preparing all that in the kitchens of the school. So they're doing another one this year um, in March. And um, from what I know, the kids are going to be doing all the, providing all the entertainment as well this time, which is great. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the timeline for building the actual school then? What happens We've got a, about a five year plan. Part of the difficulty is the corruption in the red tape in Uganda. So although, you know, our, our fundraising, you know, we keep doing lots of really unusual events and things, and, and I say people are coming on board strongly. The biggest problem for us really is um, dealing with Uganda. You would think they would want us to come along and build a school, but it's just not as simple as that. There's a lot of legal issues involved, which we are dealing with. So a lot of hard work going into this, mm -hmm. but it will be worth it in the end. It as will, and, and I have no doubt in my mind that the school will be built, and Pete Housen will come out, and many of the other artists will come out and um, and work with these kids. Um, so it's, it's 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 going to happen, but it will be a five year plan. So so the artists themselves, they will they're planning to visit the school when yeah, it's complete. Yeah, I mean, you know, quite a number of them have said to me, you know, I would love to go out and work with these children. Um, so. I can't let them down now. They have to come out. <laughs> so, so finally, when does the auction end? The auction ends on November the 3rd. Okay. So. And any ideas what you're expecting to gain from it financially or you don't want to I say? I wouldn't want to take a guess. Um, you know, I was talking to McTears about that and they were just saying, you know, how it all just happened so last minute. But I do know that we're probably going to raise enough that we can certainly build that artistic centre within the school. And that in itself, for the artistic community to come together here and do that is something wonderful. Fantastic. Michaela, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you. Thank you.